All right, today we're gonna to be talking about basic information. Who is Ruth Benedict? Where did she come from? Then we're gonna switch gears and talk about what she's known for. And finally, we're gonna close out this video by talking about some of the work that she is best known for in the field of anthropology. So let's start out with some basic information. Benedict was born on June 5th, 1887 and passed away on September 17th, 1948. And she was actually born and passed away in New York, New York. So this woman was a true New Yorker at heart. Then she earned her undergraduate degree at Vassar College and went on to study anthropology. That's why you're all here, anthropology at the University of Social Research. Then she finished out her education at Columbia University to study anthropology again, but this time she got her PhD. So what is Benedict known for? Now, most notably, Ruth Benedict was a cultural anthropologist and she focused on the intersection between culture and personality. I personally think that personality is kind of what made her stand out because that was kind of a unique perspective on cultural anthropology, but more on that later. Now, remember how earlier I mentioned that she got her PhD at Columbia University? Well, <laughs> we're still talking about what she's known for. And one of the things that people tend to hear about Ruth Benedict is that she actually got her PhD at Columbia University under Franz Boas. And for anyone who doesn't know, Franz Boas is actually considered like the father of anthropology. So the fact that these two anthropologists were very intertwined and connected is a pretty big deal. Now in her work, Benedict is actually known for arguing that culture is the byproduct of many different elements, including beliefs, traditions, kin relationships, economics, so, so many things, you guys. And all those things together, all these elements together are actually what produces culture. And that's huge because it's not easy to say that culture, you know, what is culture? It's a very complicated question to answer. And that's really what she started to get at very early on. The final thing that I want to mention in this section about what is Benedict known for is she really proved the intellectual power of women. She accomplished so much in anthropology as a woman. And at the time, anthropology was a really male dominated field. So to have a woman really prove the intellectual power of women to me is really inspiring. Now, Benedict, like I said earlier, she's accomplished a lot and she wrote a lot. But the two pieces that I'm gonna be talking about today are the ones that I think she's the most well known for. And I have a feeling a lot of people would agree with me on this. Now, the first one is patterns of culture. You've all maybe probably heard of patterns of culture. I think this is probably the most popular one. And then the second one is the chrysanthemum and the sword patterns of Japanese culture. Those are probably the two biggest ones. And if you want me to talk about other work that she's done, let me know in the comment section down below. But for now, we're gonna be talking about those two. Now, patterns of culture in anthropology was a really big deal because Benedict was able to compare three different cultures and make a really good argument. Now, those three cultures, I'm gonna put them on the screen right here because I don't wanna run the risk of pronouncing anything wrong, but she compares these three cultures and talks about the diversity in human behavior. Now, through this comparison, Benedict is able to put on display how different each culture is and as well as that, how different people act within each culture. And then this is my favorite part of the whole, the whole argument, you ready? If these three cultures are so different from each other, and that's only three cultures in an entire world, what does that say about the rest of humanity? What does that say about how different we all are all over the world? Guys, again, we've maybe this seems obvious to you, but at the time, this was, this was pretty novel information. And again, remember when I said we were gonna be talking about personality later? That's, that's now, now is later. In Patterns of Culture, Benedict also argues that your personality actually dictates where in a culture you're going to fit in. And on top of that, if you have your personality as, as you do, that personality might actually fit in different places if you were to pop them in another culture. How interesting is that? Finally, I did just want to mention that she does talk about the relationship between the individual and the entire culture. Uh, that's a, a big piece of this piece. So if this sounds interesting to you, go check it out. Uh, but now on to Chrysanthemum and the Sword. Now the Chrysanthemum and the Sword Patterns of Japanese Culture is really interesting in origin, in my opinion, because I don't think you often hear about anthropology works starting the way that this one did. And 
basically, you guys, Benedict was asked by the U.S. government to go and study Japanese culture and Japanese behavior during World War II so they could make predictions about what the Japanese would do during World War II during the occupation of Japan. I mean, that's wild. I honestly don't know if there's more that I need to say about the chrysanthemum and the sword. I think even that description just gives you all a really good idea of what the piece is about. But I did want to throw in here that these works do not go without criticism. Anthropology and humanity in general have come a long way. Today we are completely different than we were during the time of these publications. And there, again, there's a lot of criticisms that get made about these and I'm not telling you to go read them and say everything in them is fact and that you should be doing or believing everything in there, no. I'm telling you guys about these because I think understanding where anthropology comes from helps you to understand how we got to where anthropology is today. All right, so again, I'd love to talk about the criticisms of these works another day, or if you know of any, comment that down below. But yeah, please just don't go into them thinking that this is all true or what people do 100% today. All right, I told you guys that that was gonna be the last section, her work, but actually wanted to throw in a little fun fact. So a while ago, I did a video on Margaret Mead, who is like the queen of anthropology. We love Margaret Mead, the queen, you know, we love her. But we already know that Benedict and Boaz knew each other. What if I told you that Benedict and Mead knew each other and crossed paths? Uh, and also, what if I told you that they didn't only cross paths as friends? What if I told you that they were lovers? It's, it's true. Margaret and Benedict were lovers, and I personally love a good old anthropology love story. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope this helped you get a better understanding of who Ruth Benedict is. I will leave all my sources linked down below as always, and let me know who you want to learn about or maybe what else you want to learn about anthropology. All right, I'll see you guys next week. Bye.